Greetings, Internet, and welcome to the second episode of The Nerds Who Say Yo. 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 That's Yo. right. That is right. I am I'm amazed too. We made it to episode two. We made it this far. We made it this far. Can you believe it? Where is the confetti blaster? Right. We gotta get one of those. Yeah. But we don't have that much budget yet. I know we're not we're not fancy car salesmen. We don't have a confetti blaster every single time we do something. That would be cool if we did though. Uh huh. Da, 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 da. We'll, we'll put Shoot that in the budget. <laughs> Ooh, get a t shirt cannon. Oh, can we get a t shirt cannon? We should get a t-shirt cannon. I know. We have to get a t-shirt first, though. Well, well, first we have to get an audience to shoot the t-shirt cannon into. Yeah, and, and then, then, you know. Unless you just want to shoot at each other with the t-shirt cannon. <laughs> <laughs> that would be fun. That that would be very fun. Just back and forth at each other. We do have Nerf guns. That can work just as well. See, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> it's booming time. If you didn't know, this is the nerds who say yo. We yo. don't really uh, like to stay on topic here. That's not really our thing. No, that's too much work. Yeah, if, if you want to listen to one of those podcasts, then y you should go, like, check out the top ten on iTunes. Actually, you should not. You should just stay right here. <laughs> just stay right here. Yeah, don't leave us. <laughs> yeah, don't we leave need us. You we're, here. we're desperate for viewers. <laughs> I mean, we got one last time, so hey. Did we? I was too busy editing. Oh, right. <laughs> I mean, I hope so. <sighs> um, we're crossing our fingers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, where shall we start? Xander, you said you had a lovely topic today. D did you want to go first or shall I? Sure, I'll go first. Unless right. you want to do rock, paper, scissors again. No, I don't want to do rock, paper, scissors again. <laughs> so, All right. you may or may not have heard of... This is an old game from like a while back. Well, not too far back, but it's a little while back. And it was a game for your phone. Uh, and it was a game called Ingress. And how the game worked was Wait, you could... It, it was called what? Ingress. In, in, it, what? Ingress? Yes, yeah, with a G. Sorry, in... I'm sick and I can't pronounce things correctly today. You, you sound so fine. I sound yeah. fine. Yeah, your, okay. your voice is coming through on this and you sound fine. Okay. You broke the wall of illusion. I did. <laughs> so... So it's called Ingress, and it's basically this like virtual, what's the word, AR, I guess is a good word to use, augmented reality world, where you travel places in the real world, and it like associates within this world in this game, where you travel to a location where there's an enemy, and you defeat the enemy, and you steal their money. And it was a relatively successful game, but then... So it's what? like an MMO. Yeah. Kind okay. of like it's a, yeah, it's like a real world thing where you play on your phone and you interact. Well, a couple of weeks ago, actually, it might have even just been a week ago, the same company was like, "Hey, what if we do this exact same virtual reality thing where you travel around for Pokemon?" Uh huh. And it's called Pokemon Go, and it's coming out next year. So what you'll do is, in the real world, you'll travel around to different locations. And in these said locations in the real world, you'll find Pokemon in the game. And you can capture these Pokemon. And all of your nerd friends can come together to defeat Mewtwo. And just look like a bunch of weirdos walking around in the real world with their phones. I remember this being a Google prank. Like, wasn't this an April Fool's thing for Google? Google Maps? I don't remember, possibly, but if it was, some idiot thought it was a good idea to make it, like, legit. <laughs> I think they announced it at the Apple, uh, new, hey, new iPhone conference. <laughs> it sounds really cool, and I, for one, would totally love to play that game, except my radius in the game would be, like, two miles that way or something. <laughs> so it's like, if Mewtwo's all the way over there, nope, sorry, too far, can't go catch Mewtwo today, Sorry. <laughs> Well, you'd have to just take it every single time you go to a Comic-Con. Mm-hmm. Except that'd be one more thing you have to do at a Comic-Con. Yeah. But, like, the way they have it set up in... The, there's, like, a commercial for it. And it shows, like, everybody in the world all rushing to Times Square in New York City. And there's, like, thousands of people all conveniently playing this Pokemon game on their phones. Because Mewtwo is there. And they're all gonna try to catch Mewtwo at the same time. And I'm just like, realistically, I can't see that happening. Because... I feel like the majority of the Pokemon demographic is 10-year-old kids who, like, oh, oh, no. can't travel all over the place. N no, no, not not anymore. 
No, not anymore. Like, you gotta remember, Pokemon was this thing that was made in the 90s. Mm-hmm. And all the kids that were that were in the 90s grew up. And yep. now Pokemon is, like, more of a 20-year-old kid's thing. Mm-hmm. And all, like, it's e- true. Even if you look at the, like, demographics for the video games, guess who's playing the Pokemon video games? Not kids. Exactly. Yep. You. He, he, Xander just raised his hand. Yep. I virtually raised yeah. my hand. Th- thank you for doing that on audio podcast. Yes. You can see my hand. Hello. Yeah. If someone knows... The, if, if someone has an answer to this, then please leave it in the comment section below. I'm not saying this to be smart, but when have you ever seen, like, a kid kid play a Pokemon game? Whenever I see a kid playing a video game, it, it's on a freaking smartphone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because they're playing the emulated version from, like, the Game Boy on their phone because we can. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Also, I'm sure you've noticed this, too, but, like, there's always, like, when you're growing up in school, there's always, like, the fads of what's cool and what's not cool. Yeah. What was oh, yeah. cool in elementary school was, like, the lamest thing ever when you were in middle school. Like, if oh, you yeah. were in middle school and you got caught playing Pokemon, you were a fucking loser. If you watched Dora the Explorer, you were a loser. But now, in, and then you go into high school, and then everybody's playing Pokemon because it's, oh, it's cool. And mm-hmm. Dora the Explorer is, like... The coolest thing, well, but not in middle school. Now that we're in high school, it's totally okay. Like, well, what? Well, well, here's here's the thing with that. Here's the here's the cracked code with that. The thing with middle school is that you think in order to be cool in middle school, you need to not like uh, whatever you liked in elementary school in order, yeah. and you think that that's the system of logic and that it to grow up. But that's not how it th- th- works at all. That's not but, how any of this no, works. That, that's not how any of this works. And then you get to high school and you realize, oh wait, that's actually not how it works. Uh, oops, I just, uh, I, I think I sold all my valuable Pokemon cards that could probably pay for my college. Yeah. <coughs> and oops. then you got this guy that still kept all his Yu-Gi-Oh cards and his original print Dark Magician <sighs> that I don't know how much it's worth, but it's probably worth <laughs> a lot of booty. Mm-hmm. Yep, I haven't gotten rid of any of my Yu-Gi-Oh cards either, so hopefully they're worth something. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, we'll but, see. I guess. But you got me <laughs> on a rant there. Yeah, I did. You're welcome. Thank you. I appreciate that. What was your topic again? I forgot. Oh yeah, the Pokemon Go virtual reality oh, yeah. phone game. Then we got onto a tangent of Pokemon. Yeah. So so basically, with how the game works is you download the app on your phone, and then you get this little. It's like a. I want to say it's like a wristwatch because that's kind of what it is. Only it's not a wristwatch. The you get Apple it's a watch? bracelet. No, it's it's just like this weird little bracelet thing that you wear on your wrist, and all it has is a little Pokeball on Fit, it. Fitbit. It does nothing. It's kind sure it can. It's kind of like a Fitbit, and it helps like track your location. Even though that's kind of what the phone is supposed to do. So I'm not really sure what the point is because if your phone can track your movement, why do you need this bracelet thing? But I don't know. So you'll you'll be able to tell who's playing this game. You'll be like. I see you. I'm really going to have... This is going to be one of those things where I have to watch YouTube videos to see for what it's it. Like, because yeah. no, the, occasionally... And I watch this at E3, too. Occasionally, there's something that comes up. Because when they're, when they're hyping something before it comes out, they'll, they'll overhype it, and they'll say they have a habit of telling you that their game can do shit that it clearly cannot do. And they'll say that their technology <laughs> can do stuff that clearly technology cannot do yet. And I'm I'm wondering if this is one of the things where can it can it really do all the things that you're telling me it can do, or it could be one of two things like either a uh, it's not everything that they're saying it's gonna be, or two you're not you're not understanding it clearly. Yeah, when Ingress first came out, I downloaded it, and I realized that you have to like travel around for the game to like be worthwhile. And I opened the app one time because I was riding to go home from college. And I was like, I wonder if I'll run into any bad guys or whatever on the road back home. And I saw a bunch of lights flashing on the map that was like, oh, there's stuff over here. And I'm like, well, I'm going home. I'm not going to go over there right now. I don't have time for that. It's an hour drive to get home and it's nine o'clock at night. I don't got time for that. (laughs) And then I just deleted the app after that because I was just like, I'm not committed enough to this. Yeah. But maybe with the Pokemon theme, maybe I'll be more committed to it because Pokemon is where it's at, yo. 
<laughs> Maybe. Well, there's but... people that do Pokemon religiously. Yeah. So there I are. Could, yeah. I could see them like traveling just for this Pokemon thing. I will travel far and wide. Or, or maybe or, not. You never know. Yeah. I will travel across the land, searching far and wide, but like for real. <laughs> <laughs> the power that's inside of my smartphone. <laughs> Whatever you do, bring extra batteries. Oh god, that's totally gonna happen. That would suck. Everybody's gonna, everybody's gonna be in the same spot all at the same time. And if you know how cell phones work. When mm-hmm. a whole bunch of phones are in the same spot, everybody's service sucks ass. Yeah. And then that just drains your battery, and then everyone's phone dies, and they're all sad. Well, and that's tragic, but it's true. It, here's the thing. Imagine if, like, okay, you spend all this money to go to Germany just to get this one Pokemon. Mm-hmm. And then you're on the flight, and you're thinking, hmm, I got a lot of time on this flight. I know it. I'm just going to open up my phone, play some Fallout. And then you get there, and your battery's dead, and you can't get your Pokemon. Yep. Well, cause like I know in the Pokemon games they used to do stuff like that before, where like if you took your Pokemon game to the Pokemon Center in Japan or whatever, and s- plugged your game into this thing, they would give you a free Pokemon in the game. Ah. So I mean, this is potentially probably gonna work something like that. Only you'll have to put effort into catching these Pokemon when you go to these places. But I'd have to see gameplay of the game to fully understand it because. As far as I understand, you just travel around and catch Pokemon and become a master. So if I go to Japan yep. and I go to the Pokemon Center in Japan, can I get Chansey? Yeah, well, you'd have to find out in the game, yeah. obviously. You'd have to see if Chansey's there, well, find all, some grass. Of all then... the places in the world, that would be where Chansey is. Yep, and then you'll travel through a cave and find all of the Zubats. <laughs> you'll find like 500 Zubats when you're trying to go through a cave. And it's like, no, god damn it. So, yeah. <laughs> we'll right. see how that game turns out. Shall we move on to the next topic? Sure, let's do it. All right. Moving on from Pokemon. <laughs> so, Xander. Me. This weekend, I watched a very fantastic movie from Netflix. It was Ooh. called Pacific Rim. Have you seen it? I've heard of it, but no, I have not seen it. Okay, good. That'll make this topic a lot easier. So, in the, the movie Pacific Rim is basically about these robots... Mm -hmm. that they built in order to fight these aliens. But the aliens did not come from outer space. They came from the ocean. Oh, okay. The Pacific Ocean. That's why it's called Pacific Rim. Makes sense. Okay. And I watched this movie, and I watched it from beginning to end, and it was absolutely awesome. Oh, okay. But the thing is, I got this movie from a Netflix DVD. And I was was sitting there thinking, you know, uh... this movie was a lot more than the trailer uh, mm-hmm. informed me of. Why, why didn't I go to see this movie? Well, because the trailer didn't have a lot of information for me. But yeah. at the same time, one of our big complaints nowadays is that the trailers give too much information. Yep. So if the trailers give too, too much information for us, then... Then we go see the movie, and then we don't like the movie, and we're disappointed by it, and then we get spoiled by stupid Terminator spoilers in their trailers. Mm-hmm. But if they give just a little bit of information, then we, <coughs> then we don't go see their movie, and we wait for them to either be on demand or delivered to us via Netflix DVDs. Yes. So what is a happy medium to this dilemma Without just, oh, let's make a superhero movie? It's a great question. It's a very deep question, too, because I've noticed that. Like, a lot of times when you watch movie trailers, they literally show you everything about the movie Mm -hmm. so that after you've seen all of the trailers and you put together and you watch the movie, you could pretty much reconstruct all of the trailers and make the movie out of it without maybe, like, 20 minutes of side conversation. Did you ever see Paul Blart Mall Cop? Yep, the first one. The yeah. first one. Uh, like that's another conversation. Why did they make a second one with Paul Bart I one? Seen the second one, yeah. Yeah, with Paul Bart one, you could tell me that entire movie just from the trailers, and there was a lot of trailers to that movie, and mm-hmm. all of the jokes were in that movie. All the meat of the movie was in that uh, trailer, and then they made a second one. Yeah. And I, I'm like, uh, no. 
I'm not going to see. I'll, if I see Paul Blart 2 at all, it'll be via Netflix DVD. I'm not going to see it mm-hmm. in theater. I can't imagine that did good. Right. I don't know. Like Dumb and Dumber 2, I think I, I think it was that one. I heard that movie sucked, the second one. Mm-hmm. Was it, it? There was some sequel movie that they made that just like they shouldn't have. It was probably that one. But like, I feel like that's kind of, in a way, it's almost kind of like our own fault for this because like movie companies will come out with the teaser trailer like a year before the movie and then the mm-hmm. fans want to see another trailer and we just want to see more so they put another trailer and then we're like oh this mm-hmm. is so awesome oh my god i want to see another trailer i want to see another trailer and like it's the audience wanting more that kind of makes the movie studios give more and then they almost give us too much is kind of the problem Which is kind of what I like about, like, with the Star Wars movie right now. Like, I've literally only seen probably, like, one or two actual trailers for the new Star Wars movie that comes out in, like, four months. Mm -hmm. So, if they keep those trailers nice and low and keep showing us the same set of footage but slightly different instead of, here's a whole new trailer of entirely new stuff you haven't seen yet, you know, it'll keep the movie hopefully a better surprise in the long run. Yep, but here's the thing with Star Wars. What if it sucks? Yeah, I, I really hope it doesn't. But what what if it sucks? That that could be that's another mystery. Mm-hmm. We we're, we we had episode 1 and everyone was like, "Yay, it's episode 1." And then the everyone was really let down by the prequels. And then everyone's getting rehyped by episode 7. And then we're not asking the question, "What if episode 7 sucks?" Yeah, and I really hope we don't get to that question. Well, we we just kind of just did get to that question, but we I really did. hope it doesn't suck because like I mean, the first three, they were okay, but they were, like, way... When, when you say first three, do you mean the prequels or the original? Yeah, so the prequels. The difference between the prequels and the original three are... The original three, they didn't have special effects back in the day. So all of the stuff that they wanted to accomplish was, if you want to do that, you have to do it yourself with, you know, your camera. But then when one, two, and three rolled around, they were like, you know, we can just edit all of these stupid little things in and then they went back and remastered four five and six by adding stupid stuff into the movie for no reason like when they're walking through the forest they added a creature who just walks by like what's the point of that because they can't so and i heard that for seven eight and nine they're supposedly going to step back the special effects and go back to the roots from four five and six rather than relying so heavily on the one two three special effects like, they have, like, if they're filming and it looks like they're in a desert, they're actually in a desert, and they're not in front of a screen oh, yeah. that's, you know, green, that they can just put some sand in the background. Like, they're actually there. And I think that's really cool. And that's helping hype up the movie a bit. I hope. It's good. But we'll see. Well, it was more about, like, it was more than just the special effects. The uh, the originals were more on, the stories were more on the, the deeply, like, forced religious side mm-hmm. of Star Wars. And it was more about the teachings rather than just midichlorians. Midichlorians! Oh, my God. The midichlorians. Oh, my God. Don't even get me started on midichlorians. What yeah. the fuck is that? Yeah. The, well, okay. What midichlorians are, it's basically uh, the equivalent of the Dragon Ball Z power level in Star Wars. What's his midichlorian level? <laughs> it's over 9,000! It's over 9,000! <laughs> and what does that mean? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. He's just got a lot of mini chlorians up in there. What it means is, uh, when they released Soul Calibur Four and they had Darth Vader and Yoda fighting each other, it means that Darth Vader can beat Yoda. That's yeah. basically all that it means. Because of his <laughs> super. And you notice they just bullshit mini chlorians in Episode One because not once was it mentioned in Four, Five, and Six. It was an uh-huh. idea they were like in Episode One. Hey, yeah. what's this? thing uh, let's just make this thing and i don't think they mentioned it ever in episode two and three no, at all I don't it think... was just an episode one little <laughs> thing that they were just like hey let's do this thing and then everybody was like no don't do that thing and we were like okay <laughs> no you, no, you should you should not do that again yeah please don't <laughs> so Xander, so, me star wars isn't the only thing that we're excited for oh yeah we're also excited for the deadpool movie oh my god yes <laughs> I am going to be going to see that as soon as I possibly can. Yep. I'm actually more excited for for that than ac- actually anything else right now. The two mm-hmm. movies I'm excited for are Deadpool and uh, Doctor Strange. Mm-hmm. 
Benedict Cumberbatch, yeah. With ben- <laughs> Benedict Cumberbatch is going to be good in that. Uh, he has trouble saying the word penguin. Have you seen this interview? Oh, God. <laughs> no, but I ought to. You have to go look it up. He uh, there. So he did a nature documentary one time on penguins. And apparently with his app, with his uh, accent, he has trouble saying the word penguin. <laughs> and as the documentary goes on, his pronunciation just gets worse and worse. It goes from penguin to pengling to pengling. <laughs> oh my god, that's funny. <sighs> See, I just when you said that, I thought of this other thing. I read about uh, in an episode of Doctor Who uh, with David Tennant, since he's um, Scottish instead of like British, his accent is slightly different. Mm. So he had to do a British accent for the show which you know <laughs> peter capaldi kind of does the same thing but um uh i read that he has a very hard time with his like the letter o pronunciation keeping it british instead of accidentally going back to scottish uh, so yeah in the episode with the jadoon whatever those things were uh they purposely made him say jadoon platoon upon the moon <laughs> just because of the fact that they're messing around with him because he can't say it and keep a British accent. <laughs> oh my god. So they did that on purpose just to like say, ha, you can't say Jadoon in British, so we're just going to make you say Jadoon Platoon upon the moon and just like take that, David Tennant. And I just thought that was great. So yeah, that was my little side entry to your comment. But yeah, Pengling. I, I, I think I'd, I just found it. Oh god. Yep. <laughs> that was quick. I know, that was quick. It's like, it's it pops up in the YouTube with suggestions. <laughs> of course it does. Yep. Is penguins. Crested penguins. Parent penguins. Penguins heading home. <coughs> so why are these woodlands so attractive to penguins? What? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> like, are we sure he's not just talking about a different species of penguin known as the pangolin or no, something? No, he's, like, he's just talking about penguins. <laughs> <laughs> like, how do you... What? <laughs> okay. What country is his accent from? I think he's just British. I think. That's a good question. Let's ask the internet, let's shall ask, we? Let's ask Siri. Uh, Siri, where the fuck is... <laughs> See, Siri hasn't given me a straight answer ever. <laughs> Where so, is Benedict Cumberbatch from? Ah. Siri never gives good answers. I don't even have Siri. No, I have. I have Siri. Listen. Greater London, United Kingdom. He is from London and Greater London of the United she, Kingdom. She. She. He. It. Siri, where is Benedict Cumberbatch from? Benedict Cumberbatch is from London, United Kingdom, England. Hey. Hold up. <laughs> Thank you, Siri. Don't mention it. Oh, don't mention it. Okay, good. Speaking I like be, of Siri. I like to be polite to my AIs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can be a total asshole to Siri, yeah. and she'll just be all like, okay, that's great. Like, if you ask Siri what, like, zero divided by zero is, it subtly tells you that you have no friends. What? <laughs> yeah. Do it. Do it. Oh, my God. I have to do it now. Siri, what is zero divided by zero? Imagine that you have zero cookies and you split them evenly among zero friends. How many cookies does each person get? See, it doesn't make sense. And Cookie Monster is sad that there are no cookies. And you are sad that you have no friends. <laughs> See? It's cruel, but it's like so subtle about it. <laughs> what the hell? Yep. Have and if you, you ever ask, uh, asked Siri to tell you a joke? Oh, yeah. <laughs> she, Her she jokes gives... are lame, but they're funny. No, she'll like just give the simplest, uh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> and like, if you ask Siri why fire trucks are red, she gives you like this freakishly long explanation as to why and it's so like she does it totally makes perfect sense but like i i've needed to google this for a long time like what hmm, what uh questions do i need to ask siri and i'm helping you right now i know this is our third topic yes i need i need to ask this G- good thing my mic is right here i hope it's right. picking this up it's yeah it is okay thank you for telling me that yeah 
No, that's not what I wanted to ask Siri. <laughs> Siri, is my microphone working? Yes. Siri, is my microphone working? Interesting question. I know... I know it's an interesting question. Can you give me an interesting answer? No. You, me. Yeah, you. <laughs> okay. <gasps> Siri, why are fire trucks red? Checking on that. Here is what I found. She oh, is that going to read it to you? No, she didn't read it to me. Damn it, Siri, we're on a podcast. Right, hold on. Let me see if mine will answer it. Oh, Why it. are fire trucks red? Here is the answer to your question. Damn it, is it not going to answer it either? That is <sighs> bullshit. Okay, well, you'll just have to read it for yourself then. Because it oh. used to read it all to you, but probably now because it's so mainstream, it doesn't have to read it anymore. Yeah. What is the answer? I'm afraid that depends on the question. What? 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 Who do you oh, think okay. you are, a magic eight ball? <laughs> it's just saying, what is the answer? I'm afraid that depends on the question. Like, <laughs> I just asked you the question. <laughs> answer the question. This isn't the <clears throat> Matrix. <clears throat> well, there you go. For the viewers at home, ask your Siri and or your Google Now and or your whatever you have to talk to on your phone yeah. why fire trucks are red and read it for yourself because <laughs> I'm too lazy to read it for you. Because I can't say penglings. <laughs> penglings. <clears throat> well, we could make Siri British and ask Siri to say penguins. Like switch Siri's voice to a British accent and say, Siri, say penguins. And see if she was penglings. Oh my god, if Benedict Cumberbatch was the voice of Siri. No, here's the funny thing. Uh, you know the Penguins of Madagascar movie? Oh god, yeah. He narrated that movie. Oh man. <laughs> did he really? Of yeah. course he did. Now we gotta go watch that movie. Yep. Next time on movie night. Yep. <laughs> I think it's about time we wrap this up. Almost. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I'm also, at I'm at 31 minutes. Yep. So, Monty Python, the 40th anniversary movie version, Blu-ray, comes with a fucking catapult and you can launch cows off of the castle on your DVD because that's what you're going to do when you're watching the movie. <laughs> Are you going to get that? <clears throat> Probably. But then I also read in a comment thing on it that, I don't know if it's true or not, but they mentioned that they there was going to be a different version of the movie coming out that was called the Blu-ray that says, me. <laughs> but I don't know if that's true or not because it was just a comment on the post, so we'll see what happens. I don't but, think uh, that was true. I, <laughs> that'd be so cool if you had like the box and you just press a button and it goes, me. Me. <laughs> and like an alternative button that says, icky, icky. Boy, whatever Butter the other ring, phrase ring was. Cow. <laughs> yeah. So that's that, that's my closer for All today's right. episode. All right. It comes out next month, so yay. Thank you for joining us for the second episode of The Nerds Who Say Yo. Yo. If you can't tell <clears throat> by that last comment that, yes, we are a Monty Python reference. Yo. <laughs> we are on YouTube, SoundCloud, and now, uh, recently, we are also on PlatinumTrophyReview.org. Hey, that's a good website. That is a good website. Everybody should go to that website. Hey. It's full of rainbows and chocolate. Yes. Sold by SpongeBob and Patrick. Chocolate? Chocolate? <clears throat> what are they selling? They're selling chocolate. Cho chocolates. Uh, tune in next week for... Oh, <laughs> God knows what's going to be next week. I don't know. Who knows what's going to happen I don't at know. this point? I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm too old for this crap. <laughs> Uh. Ooh, so by actually no, I think my birthday's on Saturday. Dang it, I was gonna say by the time the next episode goes up, I'll be twenty one, but I think my birthday's actually on the Saturday. So dang it. Dang. We'll be like so close. Dang it. We'll be so close. Anyway, that's all anyway, I got. Have a beautiful day. <laughs> it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Good day. <laughs>